Welcome to the Ring of Faith, where we coach you through God's Word on how to become a knockout artist in life. Did you know there's only one way to heaven? The Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus speaking, he says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Stick around to find out more about one way. All things are possible. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking about one way. Some things in life, there is only one way. That's right. I remember when Anthony and I bought our first home and we lived in this little neighborhood. And at the time, there was literally only one way in. And it happened to go over a creek. Well, one time, we got a lot of rain. You can see where this is going. And that entrance flooded completely. I mean, the creek rose up over the road. The police were there stopping people from even attempting to cross it. And I was trying to go to work one morning, got my car, got up to that entrance, and had to turn around and go home and call work and say, I can't come in right now. I can't get there. There was only one way out. And of course, later they added another uh, way out. But at the time, that was it. And so I, you know... Sadly, couldn't go to work, Aww, at least till the baby. afternoon. I know, it was rough. I went back and laid down. <laughs> That's funny. It was early. But we just came back this weekend, and we had some bad storms here in uh, Tennessee. And we live in Middle Tennessee, but in West Tennessee, I mean, they had some bad rains and floods. And, and I heard like 20-something people had lost their lives up there. And, and we were driving through it on the way to a football game up there. And I remember going through this one way. And the police officer was standing out there directing traffic. And she's like, there is no way through here. Right. You know, there was only a boat. You could, to get into Waverly, Tennessee, that you can only get in by boat. So the one way to get into Waverly was actually out this time. Yeah. Because there was so much destruction. You know, and if we don't choose God's way, our whole life will be like that. Right. Full of disaster after disaster. But we need to choose that one way. Right. And that one way is Jesus. That's true. John 14, 6, we mentioned it earlier, is our key scripture today. And it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. That's the only mm -hmm. way. And I love the Amplified too. It says, Jesus said to him, I'm the only way mm -hmm. to God. I'm the real truth mm -hmm. and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I love that because there's a lot of um, copycats in life and there's a lot of things that claim to be truth, but he is the real truth. He's the real life, and he is the only way to heaven. Exactly, and there's so many different religions out there. Everybody's always trying to, you know, say that this, this, this is God or this is the way to God or mm -hmm. like Jesus was just a prophet or... Either Jesus is who he said he was, or he's the greatest liar of all time. And he says, I am the way, right. the only way. And so if we're going to believe in Jesus, we got to believe what he says. There's not different gods. You know, you don't get through God through Muhammad or Buddha or all these different religions. We go through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's not trying to keep anybody out. Right. He died so that everybody could come in. And John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That means everybody. It's up to you and I to believe on him. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you got to call on the name of Jesus. That's the only name that can save. That's the only way to heaven. That's so good, Anthony. And, you know, Anthony has a saying that goes, That's Jesus a good one. Jesus is the only way because he's the only one who made a way for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I looked up that word way in that uh, John 14, 6 from the original language that it was written in, written in. It means the way, the road, the journey, mm -hmm. the path. I don't know if you've ever gone hiking and gotten on a trail, but usually when you get on a path, there's an end destination. Well, the end destination for us as Christians is heaven, but you have to get on the right path. You can't just take any path to heaven. There is a one directional 
path that takes us to heaven. And that path is through Jesus Christ. Exactly. And I remember years ago when I was on the reality show that I, uh, we had to go out for a run one day. <laughs> and so I took off running and I'm out there and I'm praying, I'm praising God. You know, I'm like, man, this is awesome. I'm out here and my dream's coming true. You know, I'm on this great show and stuff and I'm just running and I'm running pretty fast and I was running with people, but I wasn't paying any attention to where the people were going, but I, so I just kept running. And it kept running. And then I'm just like, I have no clue where I am. Right. Because they took us to a place where nobody knew where we was because was, they had to keep it so secret. And so I'm out here just <laughs> running it by myself, and I got lost. I got off the one way that everybody else was going. Right. And so now I'm out here lost. The producers from the show are freaking out because they're like, man, if this gets out, they're going to mess up the whole show. Mm -hmm. So I had to end up calling, calling Leanne, had her call some of the producers, so they ended up finding me. <laughs> but there was one way that everybody was going that we could go running on. I got off that one way right. and almost messed up the whole show. That's right. That's how important it is when you get on that one way. Because Jesus is calling out to everybody, right. I am the way. Right. Pick me. Right. Receive my free gift of salvation. It isn't based on what you have or haven't done. But I'm the only way in. That's so good. And I love that you, you know, stressed, you know, pick my way. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is saying to us, which his way is an awesome way. Mm -hmm. It's a blessed way. Mm -hmm. It's not without conflict and challenges in life. And, you know, that's one of the, the big hiccups these days is that people just want to do it our own way. Mm -hmm. I want to do it my way, mm -hmm. my way. But Jesus is saying my way is the only way. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you need to, to give me a shot here. But I do know that our lives have been enriched greatly mm -hmm. when we really got on the path of God, when we really surrendered our lives to him. And I want to encourage you today to make that same decision to put Jesus first in your life, receive him as Lord, confess him as Lord, and you too can be on your way to heaven. We'll be right back. I'm a partner with Ring of Faith Ministries because I believe in their mission. They have a real heart for the lost, the homeless, the widows, and the orphans. I've seen firsthand how devastating poverty and loss can be. And if I can be a small part of that solution, I'm going to do it. Go to ringoffaithtv.com to find out how you too can become a partner with Ring of Faith Ministries. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking about the way, the one way. I love the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Right. Just one. Just one. <laughs> There's only one. Just one. There's many different religions, but there's only one way to God. Right. And it's not through religion. Right. It's through a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that came out of his grave. All these other religions or so-called gods, they're all still in their grave. But that's why we have a living Savior. Right. That rose again on that third day, and now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for you and I to receive that salvation, that free gift. Because he so loves you. He's the one way because he's the only one that made a way. That's so good. That's right. So, you know, it says there is one God, okay, one true God. There's a lot of little G gods in this world, but there's only mm -hmm. one real Father God. Mm -hmm. And then there's one mediator. And it says it right there the man is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who did these things that we're talking about. That word mediator means a go between, a reconciler. A mediator. Jesus was the one who reconciled us back to God. He took that divide and he brought it back together because sin had separated us mm -hmm. from God. But now because of Jesus, we have direct access to God, but you have to go through that access. It's like a door. It's the only way in. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19 says that God was in the world reconciling man to himself, not imputing their sins against them. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says that he who knew no sin, Jesus, right. was made to be sin for us so that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ. Right standing with God, not based on anything you and I have or haven't done, but it's all based on what Jesus has done for us. Right. 
he lived the sinless life because we couldn't. He died on that cross, took the sins of all mankind because we couldn't. He went into hell, defeated hell and the grave, and he rose on that third day. And now he's waiting, like I said before, for you to receive that free gift. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2 that he was the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but for the whole world. The sin debt to a holy God has been paid in full by the precious blood of Jesus for everybody. But it's got to be through the one, Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 that salvation is from no other name under heaven in which man can be saved. The name of Jesus. Philippians 2 says that is the name above every name. And that, that everything with the name has to bow at the name of Jesus. All these other little G gods will have to bow at the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the devil's the god, little G of this world system. But there's only one big G. Right. That's daddy God. And there's only one way to him. And that's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus. That's right. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And of course, whereby, these are kind of King James types mm -hmm. words, but the Amplified is very clear. I'm going to read it to you. It says there's salvation in no one else. Okay, there ain't nobody else that has foot the Nary bill. Nary one. Nary one. Just one that did this. For there is no other name under heaven that's been given among people by which we must be saved. For God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. So there, there's no other way. And God created us so he gets to set up, you know, the, the way back to him. And this is the way he provided. The sacrifice for sins uh, was made in the Old Testament. But the ultimate sacrifice was Jesus. And God did that for us. He sacrificed his own son at the cross, laid all the sins of the world on Jesus at the cross and then he rose again and all we have to do is simply believe that message and confess him as our lord it's that simple and we encourage you today don't put this off we're talking about this because now is the time this is important this is a message that we want to keep relaying to our viewers and to our friends and our family that jesus is the way he's the only one who's going to solve all the world's problems and the world has a lot of them but Jesus is the way, and I encourage you today to make that decision. The Bible says to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, change your mind. Change your mind. Change from you being your own God. You live in your own life, your own right. way. You know, the Elvis song, I did it my way. That's not working out too good for you. Right. And it definitely won't work out too good for you in the end. Right. No, we need to go the one way. Right. Jesus, repent. You know, a lot of, and a lot of times I've, I've led a lot of people to Jesus, and I pray with a lot of different people. And I got the opportunity the other day to lead this lady, I can't remember, she was from a different country, to Jesus. And just sharing her, you know, Romans 2, 4 said, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, to change our minds, to turn around. Right. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. So it's the goodness of love that leads us to change and turn. You know, he's not coming in, Jesus said in John three seventeen, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world that the world through me might be saved. Mm -hmm. He loves you, right? but he wants to change you. You don't clean up and go to God. No, you come as you are, right. and the Spirit of God will come on the inside of you, and he will start working it out through you, and he will start helping you to change. But a lot of people, say, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that's like, well, I don't need no God. I'm, not, I'm a good person, or I'm a this, and I'm a that. And it's not about how good you are. Or how bad you are. Right. You had a guy in prison wrote us, you know, and he had a very bad past. But when he made Jesus the Lord of his life, that past is gone. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians five seventeen says, "You become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You become a born again spirit on the inside." Paul says in Philippians three, he says, "This." He said, I forget what lies behind. I press toward a mark. Paul, Paul used to have Christians killed. He was one of the worst, worst people alive at the time. He said, I forget that. And later on in his life, he says, I have wronged no man. Because he didn't identify with who he was. He identified with who he was in Christ. And when God looks at you now as a born-again child of God, 
He sees everything Jesus has done right. He sees you in the spirit. Romans 1, 9 says we serve God out of our spirit. So God's looking at you in the spirit. But you have to place your trust on that one. Make Jesus your Lord. He's the one way to God. Then the spirit of God will come to live on the inside of you. And he will help you walk this life out. And like she said before, our lives have been totally transformed. And in the natural, it don't look like, you know, I mean, I work, you know, work a lot. Very faithful to my job. And we, you know, we raise our kids. We do everything you're supposed to do. But on the inside, it's that peace. Right. And it's that grace. And that's that relationship with God. John 10 says, I hear his voice, the voice for a stranger I don't follow. He's my father. He loves me. And he loves you too. And he is the only way. Let's in round two. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Ring of Faith. Ring of Faith wants to encourage you to not lose hope. It's in the darkest times that the light shines the brightest. To find out how Ring of Faith is helping your community, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Ring of Faith, helping others become a knockout artist in life. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking about one way. And of course, we're basing our show today on John 14, 6 that said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He is the only way to God. And today we're going to talk about some of those one way differences. And what we're talking about is differences between Christianity and believing in Jesus and every other religion on the earth known to man. And the first difference is just that Jesus lived a sinless life. Okay, no other religious figure has done this in the history of mankind that has walked the earth. Only Jesus. And Anthony mentioned this scripture earlier, 2 Corinthians 5.21, that says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so we might become the righteousness of God in him. He was made sin, but he never sinned himself. And Hebrews 4.15 says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who's been tempted all, in all things as we are, yet without sin. So he's the yet without sin that none of us really can claim other than through Jesus. <laughs> On our own, we can't say yet without sin. But Jesus did walk the earth without sin, never making a sinful mistake like the rest of us. And that is one way that he is different from all other religious figures. His mom was Mary, but his dad was the Holy Spirit. He is the only way. That's right. So the first one-way difference was Jesus lived a sinless life. And the second one-way difference is that many have died, but only Jesus rose again. Amen. Right. So we have Many of these religious figures that died, and guess what? They're still dead. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. still in the ground, but Jesus is not. He rose from the dead. And the Bible says in Romans 14, 9, For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, notice they're both there together, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And it's talking about the believers that have gone on and, and from this life and passed away. We're all going to be, you know, resurrected with Jesus one day in the air. That's called uh, the rapture or the catching away of the church. But I want to encourage you today that that's the belief. That's the foundation right there is to believe that he died and rose again. And that's a one-way difference between Jesus and all others. That's good. You know, and I love the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 through 14. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Right. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Yeah. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Right. So if we're talking about Jesus and we're saying our faith is in Jesus, but we got to believe that he lived the sinless life, that he rose from the dead, and that he is at the right hand of the Father. This is where our faith is. As a believer, as a born-again child of God, this is where our faith is in Jesus. 
that he rose from the dead, and that he is coming back for us again. Get into those scriptures. Meditate on those scriptures. Start talking to God. Show me, Lord. He loves you. He wants you to come to him. He will make it clear to you. Hebrews 4.12, that word is alive, and that word will come to life to you when you get into it, seeking God. Seek and you shall find. That's so good. You know, the resurrection is a fundamental part of the Christian faith. And without the resurrection, there is no salvation. Amen. It's a key part. I mean, that is, you know, one of the fundamental things. All right. Lastly, our last one-way difference between Christianity and Jesus and all other religions is just that our salvation is not based on our own good works good. and that is the foundation of a lot of religion is our good works things that we'll do you know we're checking off a list of things that we need to do but the bible says in ephesians 2 8 9 that for by grace you've been saved through faith that not of yourselves mm -hmm. it's a gift of god not of works lest anyone should boast mm -hmm. and why does it say that because we probably would mm -hmm. boast <laughs> if it was by our works <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at me. I mean, that's the look nature of the flesh. Get into heaven. Nature of the flesh is look at me, look at what I've done. But that's not what it's about. It said it's not of works. And all of your works added up ain't enough is what God is saying here. He's saying this is a gift. And you couldn't even come in here if it wasn't for me giving you this gift. And that gift is Jesus being a sacrifice. That's good. No, Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says to work out your salvation. Notice it doesn't say to work for it. Salvation is a free gift, but you work it out. And the good news is, Philippians 2.13, for it is God working in you both to will and to do it. So he's giving you the power, the motivation, the energy, and everything to work out your salvation. Right. Not for it. It's a free gift. But right. once you get saved, I, I, I posted this the other day. You know, salvation is a free gift. But you are drafted into a world at war, whether you like it or not. Now you become a soldier in the army of the Lord. You're born again. It's a free gift, salvation. But you're drafted into the army of the Lord. And the good news is, 2 Corinthians 2, 14, that he's always leading you in triumph. Romans 8, 37, that yet in him you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 13, that you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. 1 John 4, 4, the greater one lives on the inside of you. Colossians 1, 27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Right. That's good news right there. That's the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. You've got the almighty God living on the inside of you, the one way. You're in a war, but you're going to win. That's so good, Anthony. All right, so I want to close with this scripture. You know, we don't quote from Titus a whole lot. Uh, it's not a huge book, but I love this passage. It's in Titus chapter 3, mm -hmm. and it basically explains why we're talking about this today. It says, Titus uh, verses 4 through 6 says, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared. First of all, that's just so cool. The kindness and love of God appeared to man through Jesus. And it says, not by works of righteousness that we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration, of renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's not of works. It's not by anything that we've done, good or bad, like Anthony was saying earlier. Our salvation is because of the mercy and love of of God and I'm so thankful for it and in a little bit we're gonna have a salvation prayer but I encourage you to pray that prayer because it will change your life that's good and when you pray that prayer surrender you know don't just mouth it right don't just give lip service to God I confess Jesus my Lord I surrender right to you Jesus that's good. I am yours I give I give it all to you because right. whatever we hold back from God, that's what's going to be messed up in our lives. Surrender it all. He gave it all for you. I came to Nashville to box. I had a dream to be the next welterweight champion of the world. I trained, I sweated, I pushed. Nothing was going to stand in my way. But no matter the opportunities that I had in the ring, Life and bad choices kept beating me down. Even in a crowd, 
I felt lost. I was in a circle of defeat, drinking and shrinking into an abyss of hopelessness. But then one day, I experienced a love so great, the largest arenas couldn't hold it, the greatest champions couldn't win it. No, this love was a free gift. This love didn't require my tireless efforts. This love had a name, and that name was Jesus. When I confessed that Jesus was my Lord and believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead, he filled the empty holes. He restored the broken dreams. He breathed life into a dead soul. And now I am alive. I'm Anthony Brent Cooper, and that's my story. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to pray a prayer right now where you can invite Jesus into your heart. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if you'll confess that Jesus is your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, it's not about anything that you have or haven't done. It says that we are saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. Salvation is a free gift, but surrender your life to Him. Romans 12, 1, present your body a living sacrifice to Him. Invite Jesus in, surrender to Him, and walk with Him. I'm gonna say this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Father God, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive in it. Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3 that no man or a woman can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. That's right, Anthony. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, you can go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And, and that's how you become, become a knockout, knockout artist in life. life.